This is ESPN Esports. My name is Ardo Ocal. Oh, Evo is upon us, and I cannot wait. The Super Bowl of the FGC, and we might not, we might have a new champion already, at least in terms of titles. Here to break it all down is Jacob Wolf, and live from Los Angeles, the man himself, Bam, longtime Smash analyst, player, and commentator. Bam, how you feeling, my friend? How are you? Thanks for joining us. Dude, I'm feeling great, man. I mean, we have EVO 2019, like you said, it is upon us, and it's going to be the first, first time we're going to have Ultimate here at EVO. So I'm super excited. I've been loving this game, man. I've been playing it all day, every day. When I'm on the plane, I'm playing it, dude. When I'm at home, I'm playing it. That, that's just how I do it. It's great, so I'm excited. And not only is it the first time that Ultimate will be at EVO, it's already breaking records in terms of the Smash community. We saw the registration numbers, bam. It completely smashed, pardon the pun, every other title. It claimed the top spot. But not only that, completely unprecedented. On that Sunday, Smash will close out EVO. That's the first time that any Smash title has ever done this at EVO. Let's talk about what kind of point of pride this is for the Smash community, Bam. How incredible is this? It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. If you look at our numbers in the past for when we used to have two titles, we had Smash for the Wii U, and we also had Smash Melee, right? Or, of course, known as Melee. We've always had that there. And when you combine those numbers from those two titles, more often than not, we were first place when you look at the combined attendees coming out of Smash. But this time we have one title, and the amount of pride that people have to kind of just really showcase this is the backbone right now of the FGC. People are out here coming out in droves when it comes to Smash, and it's allowed a lot of our communities to flourish because of it. And so it's something that a lot of Smashers already knew, but it's so good to see the numbers. Yeah, it's come a long way since like Melee was struggling to get, to get into EVO six years ago because of licensing issues. And looking at this now, like it, it's incredible. I'm really, really happy for Smash. I'm really happy for its player base. I think Smash Ultimate is far better than Smash for Wii U in terms of a game itself, both to play and to watch. I think it's a great game. Uh, and like Bam was saying earlier, I play this a lot. And so looking at it overall, like I think this is a, a huge sort of like coming out party to show everyone in Smash what it finally looks like to be on the big stage, the big main event slot. I think they're going to show up. This, yeah, is, this is super exciting. I can already assume that my Ness main will lose to whatever you two are maining. I'm pretty sure we can just leave it at that in terms of our competition here. Uh, but let's talk about, you alluded to it earlier, Jacob, just the relationship between Nintendo and this tournament. Uh, it hasn't been always rosy. Uh, we have seen some bumps in the road, particularly in the past. Why don't you catch us up on uh, what the past looked like between Nintendo and Evo, particularly with Melee, and where we stand today? Yeah, so for, like, the biggest thing here is Nintendo's priority, right? And we talk about this and, uh, before in other games is, like, a sell consoles, sell games. Can't really do that with Melee, right? GameCubes are no longer sold at retail. You have to buy them used. Can't really buy Melee at retail either. You have to buy it used. So there's not a lot of incentive for Nintendo to put Melee at Evo. There's a ton of incentive to put Ultimate because you can go buy a Switch. They're coming out with a new type of Switch very soon. You can also go buy Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So looking at this, you know, the... It makes sense why Ultimate's the only title there, even though I'm very disappointed that Melee is not participating this year. But there's a long history here with Smash and Evo, right? There's a little bit of this elitism in the fighting game community that like, I've never really understood. I like all fighting games. I think they're all really fun. Mm -hmm. I think all 1v1 games are, are a little special to me because there's a little bit of competitiveness of like being next to your buddy on the couch and telling him he's much far worse than you and probably very much stronger language. A fair amount of people in the fighting game community really don't like Smash. They see it as like a party game and they're very insulting towards it. And even when it was announced that Smash would have the final slot on Sunday, there were a lot of people that were like, oh, well, you know, it's going to be empty, ha, ha, ha. I don't think that would be true. Uh, I think the arena will still have a lot of people that are interested in seeing it. Smash 4 had a rough last two years, right? Bayonetta last year in the finals, it was on Saturday, and, and it was two players and Captain Zack and Lima who were sitting there and they were just stalling. Like, we're right. to the point where Bear, the TO, had to get on stage and tell them to stop. It, like... 
Smash 4 had a lot of problems that Smash Ultimate does not have. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited to see it in that arena on Sunday. So you mentioned Melee. Bam, let's talk about the Melee community's response to all of this. Of course, it's been a little bit difficult not seeing Melee. Maybe some feelings are hurt that Melee, uh, the Melee, but from the Melee community that this title is not involved with EVO. But what is the Melee community's response to this Smash Ultimate success at EVO? I mean, I'll tell you simply, Melee forever. <laughs> that's, that's what they think, all right? And it's true. It, the, Melee has showcased that time and time again. At this point where Melee is as a community, it, they already know that they're in a place that, yes, not having EVO, EVO being the largest fighting game tournament of the year for years, it hurts. It's going to hurt. But they also recognize that they've come so far now that you cannot stop them. I mean, people don't even have CRTs anymore, and that's what they play on. And they find a way to make it happen, right? They find a way to make their game accessible so they can continue leveling up, continue playing. And the storyline right now in Melee, we just had recently Axe, Thompson Axe to go out and have incredible runs. We've had people like Plup stepping up, Zane stepping up. Of course, we all know Hungry Box, who's always been an incredible talent over there from Team Liquid. And right now, the story is just so good. And of course, you can't forget my boy Wizzy, man. Wizrobe has been doing a lot of amazing things too. And it's a thing where the story is so rich that yes, Evo hurts, but they're going to keep on moving forward. And that's, that's the way they're looking at it right now. And it's probably going to be the greatest side tournament at EVO ever. It's probably going to be bigger than some of the main titles, to be honest. Yeah, I agree with that, right? And I think that they're really, the Melee community is really looking for what is the EVO for us, right? What is our biggest event? And a lot of people have been trying to figure that out. That could be something like CEO, which I would say is probably the second biggest Smash event of the year. I know it's not Smash, Smash specific, but it does have a really nice turnout for Melee and for Ultimate. You know, there's other events like Super Smash Con, which is the week right after EVO. There's another one later in the year of the Big House. There are all sorts of various different tournaments throughout the year. Genesis is mm -hmm. one that has this like very rich history in Smash all over the years, right? That's a very Smash-dedicated tournament. So I think that the Melee community is chugging along, like Bam said, and I think they're trying to find what replaces uh, EVO in their calendar year for them. So let's talk about the competitors. There is a huge international flavor at EVO 2019 as it pertains to the Smash Ultimate Tournament. Bam, over 50, 5-0 Japanese competitors are registered for this event. What is, and just to use a term you used earlier, what is making these Japanese players come to this specific tournament in droves, my friend? Yeah, so we have 51 Japanese players coming over and you know what again you're looking at ultimate and having its first time being showcased at Evo of course it's a relatively new title one of the most important things too I do believe that Evo the team at Evo triple perfect they've been able to actually have Evo Japan so they were able to have that in two years the earlier this year they had their Evo Japan for 2019 however they weren't able to have smash ultimate there so I do believe because of that kind of interchange that we've had with EVO Japan happening the previous year and then the kind of absence of that happening at 2019 also has kind of pushed a lot of these Japanese players willing to actually go ahead and make the journey and come out and play on the big stage. And I am so excited because, man, Japanese players are something else. They're always talented. They have a very, very rich history and they love to play a multitude of characters. And in a game that has over 70 characters, fairly well balanced which means a lot of these characters can be very viable and you have a ton of character specialists best believe there's going to be some upsets coming out of japan bam we're going to be talking about some specific players in a second but just to drive this point home how impressive it is how many of those 51 competitors from japan would be say paying for their own expenses to get to evo virtually all of them <laughs> virtually all of them are paying for it you know there's a very few sponsors at that level right now in japan so a lot of these guys when they play they play because they love the game when they go to tournaments they go to the tournaments to win bags of rice that's actually what they have at tournaments that's what they give out and the whole idea behind it is it's really about them playing for pride yes i'm just no joke i'm not making this up they they play for pride they play because they love the game so when they come out there they're coming out there because they want to make a case they want to make a case and they want everyone to know 
how good Japan is when it comes to Smash Ultimate. And I also think that EVO is very much a make or break tournament for your career. If you win EVO, you can get picked up by a team and that gives you some sense of income and makes you a pro gamer, right? As you were mentioning, pro gaming is not nearly as big in Japan in terms of sponsorship dollars and people being paid a salary. And so, or even prize money for that, that matter. So when you look at EVO, you win EVO, you are probably going to get picked up by a team because there's so much publicity and so much notoriety that comes from winning a tournament like this in any game title, not just in Smash, that it's super important to be there and it's super important to get that chance. So who are some of the players, let's name some names, Bam, who are some of the Japanese players, let's start there, uh, that people should be keeping an eye on? So right now we have Shuton. Shuton is an incredible player, uh, predominantly at Olimar main. And Olimar is one of the strongest characters right now in Smash Ultimate. Just recently there was a patch that kind of nerfed the character a little bit. So the character is not as strong as it was in previous patches. But regardless, really, really strong competitor, really amazing talent. And he has blown the pack away more often than not. Of course, you have number one currently in Japan, at least up to this point, we have Zakurai. Zakurai plays a multitude of characters. Uh, he first made his real big stake happening at Genesis, where he was able to get in that top eight and also go in, into Ultimate Summit that happened as well. And he predominantly plays Wolf, but he's also been playing a lot of characters, a lot of more characters. And in this game right now, because it is a new title, having that character diversity is very huge. We also have Proto. Proto Ban, who's also been a strong Lucina, took MK Leo, who right now, by the way, is seen as the number one in Smash Ultimate. He's taken him to game three, and he is someone that has been a constant Japanese threat. Of course, you have Neotone and Kameme. Uh, these guys are longtime veterans of Smash. Some of these guys have been playing all the way into Brawl, all the way back. So these guys, long-term veterans, and they continue to set the standard in Japan. And these are guys that are well known throughout the community, but even guys a bit under, maybe lesser known, are still a multitude of threats. You have Takara, you have Hikaru coming. It just, there's so many good players, and best believe if you get caught slipping, you're done. You know what, you just mentioned Takara there and just the diversity of characters that we see. Isn't he maining Ken? I mean, that's, that's, that's fabulous going into a tournament like this. Like to see a, a player of Takara's level maining someone like Ken. We could see some major Ken victories at EVO. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that character, so they just had a recent patch, uh, 3.10, where this character received a multitude of buffs. And the character already, in my opinion, was already a really good character. It just it took a lot of time to really get accustomed to it because the character had a lot of depth. A lot of new tools that most characters don't have that are kind of just a little different than the standard stuff that you will usually see coming out of Smash Ultimate. And yet, Takara, long time Ryu main, back and forth. Then, of course, now a maining Ken in this game. People are going to get hurt, man. People are <laughs> Ken Masters is good. He's good. So you have to be careful, man. I'm telling you right now, there are certain people, they're going to fly all the way to Evo, and they're going to leave that venue, and they're, they're going to fly home and still not know what happened to them. Uh, Guarantee. I, I, a little I, bit of shock value, I'm, right? I'm a fan of the Ken Masters origin story, so Takara has a little place in my heart right now going into this tournament. Uh, let's talk about some of the players stateside. Jacob, of course, you have to start with MK Leo. There has been... Uh, since the launch of Smash Ultimate and professional tournaments, at least ones that we have seen, $564,000 in prize money awarded in Smash Ultimate tournaments. And MK Leo has claimed 10% of that, over $50,000 in his pocket since the beginning of 2019, Smash Ultimate. What makes MK Leo so impressive, Jacob? He's just really good, right? and he puts in a lot of hours, right? This is someone I was talking about, and he's never won an Evo, but this is someone I was talking about that, like, it's changed their lives, being really good and consistent in this game, right? He was a very young kid that was living in Mexico, and now he's, like, making a ton of money in a very short period of time because he's really good at this game. He's incredibly devoted. I've gotten to see him win these Genesis events in person in the last couple of years. Incredible. I 
and he's just so good. He's put in so much time. It's clearly a very dedicated thing for him. It's a big part of his life. And I just think that's sort of what makes him unstoppable is there's a drive in him that I think some people struggle with. He definitely does not. Bam, he has victories at Genesis 6, Momocon, Smash and Splash, these S-tier Smash Ultimate tournaments. He is racking up those victories, my friend. Yeah, he is, he is so, so good. I mean, he is definitely a cut above the rest. You, the way that he plays the game, when he picks up these characters, he just does things that others really can't right now. He seems like he just has a better understanding of the game than most people. His spatial recognition is absolutely incredible. The way that he breaks people down once they're in the air or once he has them on the edge when they're trying to recover back to the stage, he's just so consistent. And that's the biggest thing about him. He is so consistent. And just as Jacob was saying, he doesn't get phased. There's a couple other players that we have, top players that they're very strong, but if they run into any kind of these talents and they seem to get one on them or something that's unfamiliar, which of course you're going to come through when the game, you know, you're in the early cycle of a game, MKLeo doesn't get phased. He just doesn't get phased. He's always on point he's always on it and you can really see in his consistency going throughout this season like he has just always been that player to beat yeah but let's not forget there are some other people out there that are very good in the united states well actually i want to chime in there because even superman has his kryptonite right and mk leo has tweak tweak has been somebody who has had mk leo's number jacob yeah, I mean, Tweak is super impressive. He, he got progressively better at the tail end of Smash 4, and he's come out very, very competitive here in Smash Ultimate. To Bam's point, I don't think Tweak has necessarily as much consistency as MKLeo, right? But I do think he's a really strong player. From a skill perspective, to me, he's probably the second best in the game if we're just looking at skill and not factoring in consistency. And his character's really, really good against some of the things that MKLeo plays. You know, I think that people like Tweak and people like to buzz, even with the Olimar nerf, I do think that they have really good opportunities to shine here. This is a really exciting Evo because the pool is really open in a way that it necessarily wasn't in the past. There's so many people here. We'll see if anybody drowns in pools. I'm sure some top players will. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's some sleepers that have never been in anything and they saved up money and now they're here at Evo. Um, but, you know, look, look to people like Tweak, look to people like DeBuzz, and look, look to people like MKLeo to really sort of shine next weekend. Well, you we mentioned DeBuzz the there. Bam, you and I were there, part of the commentary team at Thunder Smash, when DeBuzz won the uh, single biggest first place prize in Smash history, $20,000 in his pocket for winning that tournament. What are some other names, Bam? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and he bought us some Yeezys with that money, too. Yeah, <laughs> so, is that what he <laughs> Not bad. He, yes, he did. <laughs> yeah, not bad, not bad, you know. Uh, but we have, of course, Mars, right? Mars has been a guy, he's probably made the biggest jump in terms of skill if you are comparing Smash 4 going into now Smash Ultimate. He is an incredible player, initially was playing with Ike, and going ahead with Zero Suit. Now more so has just been playing primarily Zero Suit Samus, and he has been incredible, absolutely incredible. He's definitely had a lot of close sets actually with MKLeo as well too. And he is someone who definitely right now, Planet Global, good on them for picking him up because this guy just continues to press every single time. He's just so fast. Like his movements are so clean. So you, when you're looking at this kind of game, you always want to minimize your downtime. You don't want to waste a frame. You don't want to waste one sixtieth of a second just sitting there doing nothing. And Mars, this guy, <laughs> never wastes a frame. He is always moving. He's always mobile. And it is really hard to keep up with the speed. And I think a lot of times he just outspeeds a lot of players. And they don't even get time to implement their strategies because he's just that quick on the gun. He's just really, really talented. And so he's definitely someone who's going to be a threat. Of course, we do have one of the iconic players. Yes, NRG Nairo. NRG Nairo. This guy, always skilled. People want to see this guy win it. This guy's a big player, constant. I, I need to see him put in that work, and I need to see him do it. He can. Very, very capable. Has a lot of potential here. ESPN Esports will be on the ground in Las Vegas at Evo, so keep it locked on Twitter, ESPN underscore Esports. Bam, my friend, we will see you there. 
Absolutely. Jacob, we will see you there as well. And we will see you there. Keep it locked at ESPN.com slash esports.